The Science Ninja Team uncovers a dastardly plot by Galactor to kidnap the world's greatest scientists, sowing mass destruction in the process. Can Gotcha Man survive long enough to stop the terrorist plan in its tracks? Let's find out in our review of Gotcha Man number two from Mad Cave Studios. See you in three. Welcome back to Comical Opinions. This is our review of Gotcha Man number two. Writer Cullen Bunn and Mad Cave Studios have taken the high-flying spirit of an adventure to heart with an issue packed with drama, action, and intrigue in Gotcha Man number two. Bunn may be best known as a horror writer, but maybe he missed his calling. Let's take a brief recap of what happened in issue number one so we know where we're coming from. When last we left the Science Ninja team, they intercepted a kaiju-sized sundew plant mecha monster machine, destroying the city just as Dr. Mueller from the Alarion Dynamics Corporation was about to unveil his discovery for nearly limitless power. So he's a big wig with a big brain talking about dis big discoveries that's going to help the world. The Science Ninja team fought hard to stop the destruction, but their ship was ensnared by the giant mecha. And that brings us to the current issue. In Gotcha Man number two, we pick up with the Science Ninja team as they're still trapped in the magnetic grip of the Sundu plant mecha. Ken concludes that they can't power their way free, they can't fly their way free, they can't shoot their way free. So the God Phoenix is trapped, but perhaps they have one last option, that is to use fire with fire. It's a huge gamble, but the team agrees to activate Firebird mode. The gamble works, and the team flies free. But as they make it out of the Sundew plant's grip, the plant decides to take off. Meanwhile, an Alarian Dynamics worker escorts Dr. Mueller to a safe location in the bowels of their building, while the fight rages outside. Suddenly, the escort attacks Mueller's armed guards and takes him hostage. Look, do you see how simple and easy this is? Cullen Bunn lays out a clean, clear, well-paced adventure story that plays on the classic good guys versus bad guys model. Isn't that what pretty much every superhero comic reader wants? Without any trouble, you get the antagonists, who they are, what they're about. You get a sense of Galactor's broader plan, maybe not all the details, but at least uh, the broad strokes. And you get a very intuitive understanding of the challenge that's facing our heroes. Pretty much this is everything that a basic action-adventure superhero type comic should be. Later, the team heads back to the base. The Science Ninja team debriefs Dr. Nambu, and he relays the discovery that Dr. Mueller has been kidnapped. After reviewing recent intelligence reports, Dr. Nambu confirms Galactor has kidnapped several high-ranking scientists over the course of several months, sometimes accompanied by some form of distraction. Given the methods in Galactor's plan, the Science Ninja team now knows where the terrorist organization is going to strike next, and they get a plan together. As cool as their costumes are and as cool as their names are, the Science Ninja team has endured because they are tough and smart. They've got the best mix of brains and brawn personified. Bun effortlessly switches the team from all-out fighters to tactical planners and now spies in the blink of an eye. The transition is smooth and seamless so it doesn't feel jarring and it doesn't seem out of character. It all works together perfectly. Later, we catch up with Dr. Emmy Aoki, a leading scientist in the field of deep space research. Her building is suddenly attacked by the Sundew plant mecha. An unnamed woman quickly hurries Dr. Aoki to a secure location in the building's lower level. Sound familiar? As soon as they're out of view of security, guards, or cameras, the woman pulls a gun on Dr. Aoki. But a flying object knocks the gun out of the woman's hand, and the science ninja team has arrived to save the day. Bun concludes the issue with a hopeless ultimatum, bait, and a villain in disguise. Overall, this is a spectacular issue that improves on issue number one with a clearer plot, more action, and strong pacing. Cullen Bunn is firing on all cylinders in the series, and we greatly hope that he keeps it up. Let's switch gears and talk about the art. Chris Batista and Carlos Lopez give readers vivid and energetic action, faithful character designs, and excellent facial acting that suits the slightly over-the-top anime aesthetic. You get plenty of spectacle, plenty of energy, plenty of big visuals to keep you engaged all the way through. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. If you're a longtime Gotcha Man fan and wonder where this series sits in continuity, Lord Berg Katze has a significant presence in this issue. That means Berg Katze in this issue is some kind of duplicate or clone, or this adventure takes place before Gotcha Man episode 105. If you don't know what happens in episode 105, I'm not going to spoil it, but all I'm going to say is there is no more Berg Katze after 105. 
Final thoughts, what do we think about Gotcha Man number two? It's a high-flying, action-packed adventure filled with drama, intrigue, and excitement. Cullen Bunn's script is as faithful to the art team's reverence for the classic designs and aesthetic approaches perfection. It's not a perfect comic, but it's pretty darn close, so kudos to everyone involved. Therefore, Gotcha Man number two from Mad Cave Studios earns a 9 out of 10. We've been impressed with how faithful this comic is to the source material, but let us know what you think. Are you enjoying Gotcha Man so far? Do you Give us a thumbs up if you are and leave a comment below with which anime you'd like to see Mad Cave license out next. There's tons to choose from. Also remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review and buy this comic to help support the channel. That would be greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.